Hello YouTube, this is King Known Cleary on YouTube, at King Known on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I just saw something that opened my eyes a whole lot. The Louis Farrakhan at the Breakfast Club interview is by far their greatest interview ever. Because, I mean, he's one of the last real niggas alive. Now, saying that, obviously... He talked about how the media has been denying him all these years because every time I've seen Louis Farrakhan on an interview, they would throw their most ignorant, trolling reporter right at him. And Louis Farrakhan would chew him them up every time. I watch a major a lot of Louis Farrakhan interviews and, and trust me. He's ripped. He's ripped reporters a new asshole every time. And the Breakfast Club is actually the first time he actually gotten on a landscape that big because obviously the Breakfast Club has at least four, four to five million listeners. So at least two and a half million heard Louis Farrakhan speak true words of wisdom. The man's been on the planet 82 years, has overseen civil rights, the original Million Man March, he has overseen poverty, he has, he has changed his entire religion, and rubbed elbows with Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Martin Luther King, etc. He's, he's seen it all and done it all. But it's a shame that Nobody has a quarter of the passion that this man has for the black race to succeed. Um, as you know, I'm a big, huge hip-hop fan. And Louis Farrakhan brought up in the interview that in the late 80s, future prisoner owners sat down with music execs about conspiring to keep the black conscious rappers from the forefront of the industry because at that time KRS One, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane were all bringing consciousness to the forefront. And of course also Queen Latifah as well. So the music execs and the prisoners Basically, I mean, the future prisoner owners of America, of corporate America, devised a plan to put gangster rap at the forefront. This shit just didn't happen. Don't get me wrong now. I love me some gangster rap. I love Dr. Dre. I love Ice Cube. I like T.I. I like Meek Mill. Those are somewhat the, I guess, the names most known for gangster rap, in a sense. So... Basically, they conspired to instead put, po instead put, you know, powerful, masculine, conscious rappers at the forefront. They put them to the wayside and put ignorant black people. I'm not trying to call Ice Cube and T.I. and those guys ignorant. They've done ignorant things, but they're not ignorant people. But it's just that corporate America wanted to showcase black people in an ignorant light. And they wanted that bullshit at the forefront so that they could slowly fill their prisons and slowly destroy our race, which is what I think a majority of the police departments across America are trying to eliminate the black race so that white supremac supremacy can remain dominant. That's just my opinion, of course, but that's what I think is going on, on from a personal standpoint. And Louis Farrakhan, you know, called out the NFL. He compared the NFL to the slave trade. This shit was some powerful shit. I had never thought about it that way. But damn, it, there are similar, you know, there's, that shit's going on right now. For real. Like, Adrian Peterson thing, he commented about that. And he went the fuck off. Like... 
you know, and Farrakhan apologized many times throughout the interview for his powerfulness. I'm like, dude, speak your mind. It's the fucking breakfast club. Everybody curses, farts, shits, drinks, pisses all on that show. You're, look, you're Minister Farrakhan. You're a fucking living god, in a sense. You don't need to apologize for nothing. Because the world need to hear that kind of message. Black people are in a state of mind where we are not empowered. We don't have nobody out here, no black leaders, no real ones anyway. Everybody is soft as, as tissue paper and cottonell tissue, like Stephen A. likes to say. There isn't, and you see all the shit that's going on in the media. The media is trying to take away male masculinity by putting these soft-ass motherfuckers in front of us. These, you know, these niggas dressing like females. You know what I'm saying? In skirts and cutesy-wootsy shit, painting their nails, pink and shit. They're trying to take mas black masculinity, male masculinity as a whole, no matter what race. I'm not criticizing you know, metrosexual, homosexuals, or nothing, but I'm just criticizing the media. They are the biggest enemy in the world outside of the government. And who funds the media? Government. But I'm not going to give everything away from that interview because I think that every human being should watch, from white people to poor people to rich people. They need to watch just to see how fucked up this world is. Kendrick Lamar had once said that it starts within ourselves. We are all products in our environment until we can strive to do better. Because people are trying to kill us. They're trying to take every smart, intelligent, well-educated black man off of this earth. Because of the black fear. This is my honest opinion you know what I'm saying? You could agree or disagree. Leave that. If you agree or disagree, leave that shit in my comments box or comment on Facebook for all I care. Because this is just my opinion. You know? Why are we in prison? Why are we shot? Why are people referring to us as thugs, criminals, gangsters? Because it's what the media glorifies. That's why. That nigga's a real nigga. The reason why I say Louis Farrakhan's the last real nigga alive, I'm not referring to the media, what the media wants you to think a real nigga is. I'm talking about it real as in knowing your true self. Real nigga as knowing your true self. Knowing what you are capable of. Knowing, you know what I'm saying, standing up for what you believe in, no matter what religion you are, no matter what race you are. And standing up against the powers that be. That's what I don, I don as a real nigga. In my that's my de my personal definition. But anyway, I think that we all have a long way to go. We've progressed so much, but as they say, one step forward, you get knocked 10 steps back or 100 steps back. I mean, a hundred steps back. I'm sorry about that. Um, I think the Farrakhan interview is powerful. Like, for the 2.5 million people, hopefully, that listened to that interview, an 82-year-old man should not be the most powerful voice on the planet. There are young and energetic people out there that 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 are willing to stand up for what they believe in which is equal rights to us all even though we are supposedly quote unquote equal we're not they look at us as criminals they don't look at us as smart motivating individual people even though they want to dress like us they want to dance like us they want to steal our slang they want to you know they want in on our culture, even though we personally funded it, and they want to put a price tag on us as a race. I think it's just criminal shit. The police, 
Those are the gangsters. Those are the real criminals. Those are the thugs. Those are the trill niggas. Those are the gangster niggas. Those are the original trap niggas. They bought in drugs to our community once we finally figured out, like, we, our word means a lot. A lot of people follow black people. A lot of people follow rappers and entertainers. They don't document masculine black individuals. One more thing I'm going to add about the uh, interview. I saw Mr. Farrakhan give props to Floyd Mayweather for doing it on his own, meaning like all they want to document is Floyd Mayweather acting a damn fool instead of the charity that he's given. I, I mean, me personally, I know he's done charity, but we know that that shit is not documented because they want to showcase him as an ignorant monkey. But deep down inside, I think, yeah, of course, I mean, money does get to certain people. Some, some people invest it and use it in different ways. But I'm just saying this. I think that the Farrakhan interview will change your, not only your day, but your life. And I think hearing an ex inexperienced old head talk some real knowledge, some shit that you're not going to get with a counselor, or not even from the uh, your parents, I think it'll change the way you think, the way you carry yourself, the way... You present yourself. So, I'm going to close this video out. I had previously recorded a video that was way better than this shit earlier. But I personally apologize if this isn't enough. But, all I want is for us to achieve goals as a race that will make us proud to be presented in a more positive light. That is all until my next video. I'm going to post the link to the Minister Farrakhan interview at the Breakfast Club in my description. Peace un may peace be unto my brothers and sisters, all races, all creeds. Y'all have a wonderful day. 100.